Hello everyone, my name is Angel Ricalde, also known as Ricalde Art, and I'm the winner of the 2024 Revolution Character Contest in the Acre category. In this short video, I'll be walking you through the development process of my character Makako Kasikai. It took me two weeks to bring this character to life, from initial concept to the final render. Hope you enjoy it. Body shape and skin details. I started with a character I often use for personal projects since it speed up my workflow. The first step was shaping the concept. I don't usually create a sketch beforehand for personal projects. Instead, I jumped straight into ZBrush to scope before it allows me to better visualize the shapes and volumes. After sculpting the base shape, I began adding skin details using noise as a foundation. Fortunately, I have an extensive collection of brushes that I've gathered over the past 10 years, which helps me save time and improve quality. Our surfaces. Using mask, I extract new geometry and separate it into polygons. Then apply polish by groups and zero mesh, which improve the definition and solidify the shapes. Once I had a low topology version of the form, I used start modeling with Z model, a quick and effective way to achieve complex shapes with basic polygonal modeling knowledge. I apply the same process to the jaw: extract, zero mesh, polish by groups, and Z modeler with Q mesh. To simulate the dampers, I also extract new geometries using mask. Apply zero measure and just polish by group before adjusting the position with the moving brush. One particularly interesting part of the process was using anchor points for the first time. It's a powerful tool for instantly creating curves. Using mask, I extract shapes from a dynamic keeping only the flat surfaces with a value. I let it apply an extrude using dynamic subdivision, setting it smooth to zero and increase the thickness as needed. Here is where the anchor points came into play, helping me refining the filigree design and saving a significant amount of time. For the robotic arm, I use an effective method by defining polygroups across the entire arm to ensure it looks functional while respecting its anatomy. After creating the polygroups, I use the group loop tool to add additional loops between the defined sections and panel loops to create beveled edge that emphasize the solid shapes. Then, using the gizmo tool, I slightly move each polygroup to add volume. For the shoulder covering, I will follow a similar approach, starting with a mask but finally improving the topology to ensure the neck area stay angular even after smoothing the geometry. I use group loops and panel loops along with smoothing brushes to create the puffy look of the piece. I essentially used the same approach to begin different solid surface subtools, varying the tool depending on the needs of each shape, whether it was for creating cavities, extrusions, ridges or volumes. I adjust them to stay solid or smooth them out based on what came to my mind at the moment. Pants and exoskeleton boots. The pants were created by extracting the geometry surface. I applied zero measure to improve the topology and adjust vertices to simulate natural stitching on the inner and outer part of the pants.
for the exoskeleton, I first create a mask with holes on the surface of the boat. I extract the gear geometry, apply the simulation, and use inflate. Next, I use trim dynamic to create some flat surfaces on the subtool and apply contrast in the deformation panel. This allows me to emphasize the shapes further. Finally, I refine some edges using the pinch brush and zero measure. Hair cardboards. For the hair, I began by inserting a low polyplane and dividing it into polygroups to generate the UVs. I ensured the plane had at least three or four horizontal edge loops, which allow me to smooth and curve the strands as needed. In Photoshop, I create a custom brush to simulate hair strands by arranging simple black dots on a white background. After fine-tuning the brush settings, I paint the strands and alphas and exported the texture to ZBrush. Using the texture map features, I applied the alpha textures and activate the transparency to preview the strands as fibers. To achieve a polished result, I use a paint art options in the transform type panel to curve the strands, adding a natural flow to the hair. Then I duplicate and carefully position the geometry switching between polygonal and alpha visualization for better control. Texture and Shading A shift effective texturing is crucial to start with clean UVs. I use UV Master in ZBrush and separate the model into polygroups to efficiency breaking it into parts like the eyes, ears, inside the mouth, head, arms, metals, and letters. This allowed me to generate UVs quickly and refine them in another software, accelerating the process. Once the UVs were ready, I organized them into UDIMs for higher texture resolution. I use substance painting for texturing. In some cases, I modify per load small materials, while in others, I reuse custom summer materials I had created for previous projects. Of course, I also create new materials specifically for this character. All materials can be stored in Substance Painter for future use. I generate various textures maps, including normal, alfero, roughness, metalness, subsurface scatter, and opacity. The opacity map was particularly useful for simulating the torn fabric of the cave. For shading, I work in Autodesk Maya with Arnold as a render engine. Here, I set up the necessary algorithms to ensure the exported textures from Substance Painter work together for realistic results. Each map controls different visual properties, such as skin transparency, color, hair transparency, specular highlights, roughness, metal reflections, and cavities. These maps were further adjusted using remap knobs to fine-tune the output. After a complex process, I achieved the final look I desired. Posing the character using Acura. For me, this was one of the first times using Acura, and I found it very interesting. Thanks to CC4 powerful functionality, I was able to rig and pose the character in just few steps, a task that would normally take hours in ZBrush or other software was accomplished in under 10 minutes. An incredible time saver for posing a character made up of multiple objects. I used three preload animations in CC4, selecting a frame from each and editing them within the software. This significantly accelerated my workflow especially since I joined the contest just two weeks before the deadline. Thanks to TC4, I successfully posed my character quickly, leaving more time for texturing, shading, rendering, and post-production. This efficiency ultimately led to my winning the 2024 Revolution Character Contest in the Acura category. And if this is one of the shortest videos in the entire process is because the workflow is incredibly quick.
Render and Compositing. At this stage, achieving the right lighting and camera angle is essential for a strong final render. For this project, I used several AOVs, or render passes, which I later composed in Adobe Photoshop. I utilized around 12 AOVs, including Albedo Direct and Indirect, Specular, Subsurface Scatter, CDEP, Amilocrucion, Roughness, and others to enhance the image and bring the scene to life. To begin the composition, I start with the Beauty Pass, which combines all the passes into a single image. From there, I add each AOV individually, experimenting with blending modes, opacity, and adjustment to tone and saturation. This approach gave me full control over the lighting, especially since I rendered each light in the scene separately. To make the character stand out, I add colorful smoke to the background, creating a streaking contrast against the black backdrop. This helped me achieve a dark yet vibrant atmosphere that complement the character. This stage was a critical part of my two-week process. Despite juggling other projects, I managed to finish on time, largely thanks to the efficiency of positioning my character using CC Force 2.